All right, so welcome back to another BTD6 video, and today we are showcasing a sneak peek of contested territory. Look at this map right here, all right? Look at this, all right? So you go like this. Look how cool this is, all right? Do you see how cool this is? That zoom function is, oh my gosh, it is crazy. So today we're going to be showcasing everything contested territory has to offer. It's going to be a long video here, so sit back, relax. Be sure to drop a like if you guys do enjoy, but let's do this. So first we're going to show every single button on the map, and then we're going to showcase every single tile category. So here we have the map right here, and look at this. The map is constantly changing. You can see some tiles switch every now and then. And so the first thing to note is that we have six teams here, all right? And you can see that each corner, this is where people start here. So we have Banana Squad over here. We have Sons of Quincy right here. And everyone will have a position out of six here, as shown on the leaderboard down here. We're on Brickles Battlers, which is the purple team. So every single purple tile is on our team. With Contested Territory, your goal is to take as many tiles as possible on the map here. To take a tile, all you need to do is click a tile that's next to a tile that you own, shown by this white outline. When you click a tile, you'll see which victory condition it is, how many rounds it is, and its status. Additionally, every single tile has a code here, right? This tile is ADA. This next tile is AFA. And so it'll take a second to get used to it, but if you need to signal a specific tile, you can. Now, when you click a tile, you'll get a challenge here, just like the challenge browser. At the top here, we can see it's a medium challenge here, and it's a least cast challenge. And so our goal is to take this tile with the least amount of cash. Now, since the tile is green here, it wasn't taken by any team here, and so we know it's a neutral tile. Most challenges are gonna have around six to seven towers and sometimes there's no hero or you can choose your hero but for this one the hero is chosen for you now it doesn't look like there's many modifiers or challenges or if there are they're very slight like for example this one has 13 max monkeys it's very unlikely that you'll hit that especially when you're trying to get the least amount of cash possible now when you do challenges here you'll have relics our team currently has four relics we have a glue trap one which gives two glue traps per game which is really good it's really helpful because glue traps don't cost any money we've going the distance all monkeys game 10 percent range that is so good this is such a good one we've hard baked all attacks do plus one damage to ceramic balloons and then we have flint tips sharp projectiles add fire dot to all balloons they damage and this one's actually really cool i was using druids for a challenge and they started setting balloons on fire which is just so cool so all the relics some of them are really useful some of them are semi-useful they just provide little buffs here and there now how you get relic knowledge is by getting relic tiles all right there's three types of tiles here we have our normal tiles here signal mine nothing then we have our banner tiles right here these banner tiles are the most difficult tiles all right they're very competitive and they give the most points but then we have relic tiles right here signal by a chest here and this relic tile gives the glue trap relic and so because our team owns it, we get two glue traps every single game. The thing is, the second we lose this tile though, we can no longer use the glue trap buff. So it's really important to hold on to these tiles. Although they give less score than regular tiles than banner tiles. If you look up here, you can see the tiles held by Briggles Battlers, our team. And another member called Twitchy Dingo took this with a time of 26 minutes and 59 seconds. Now you notice that we actually have eight different towers here, but now they're restricted, all right? You don't get infinite darn monkeys. You get two darn monkeys, right? Now the reason it took them so long though, is this is a boss tile right here, all right? We get one tier of Blunarius on this tile and you can actually see it by looking at the map look at the bosses are animated how cool is that that is so cool now if you look at the right side you can see score degrades in 17 minutes for multiple reasons but mostly to even the playing field all scores will degrade over time so let's say you're trying to take this tile and you can't beat 27 minutes it's not working out all you have to do is wait a little bit and then that time will go down and then maybe you can beat it the problem is the longer you wait the more points your opponent gets and stuff and so there's so much strategy here you'll also see in six hours the tile will turn back to neutral after 24 hours if a tile has not been contested it will return to neutral so when you take tiles you have to actively work to maintain them also look at we got a new relic while we were talking about that all tax can pop lead balloons that's so broken right oh yeah you can see someone took this tile right here and got the alchemist touch it was twitchy dingo again thank you so that's the basics right there so we're gonna pop into challenge here and actually do it here so we got tile aca right here medium standard and you gotta get the least amount of tiers possible we got these towers right here and look at our relics here we got another relic look at this relic moab clash description okay well we'll enable that now if you look here if we click a relic it actually disables another relic and that's because you have a limited amount of relics you can use per map i believe it's four but i'm not sure if it's like that for every tile so we'll stick with these here, but this is really cool because this means your strategy is always changing, all right? Especially when you get different relic tiles and lose certain relic tiles. So let's pop in here and we have 13 tickets, all right? You get four tickets per day normally. And so when you come into the match here, you can see the score you're going for in the upper right, all right? And if it's a fresh tile like this one, it will be zero here. So we just have to beat this tile with as many tiers as we want. We can do 150 tiers and we can beat this tile. However, we don't want this tile to be taken. So we're gonna try and go for a very low tier cost here. Let's start off here. And first thing to know is that we do have monkey knowledge here, all right? You do get monkey knowledge on normal tiles, but not relic or banner tiles, right? So first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go for Psy, and Psy is really good here because they upgrade all on their own without us having to manually do it, meaning we save on tiers. So Psy is gonna do a lot of damage, but only take up one tier. On top of that, something to know is that we have 150 lives, and most challenges, it looks like you have at least 100 lives. And so something to know is that life count does not matter. If you end the challenge with one life or 100 lives, you're A-OK -okay here. So we're gonna leak down a little bit here. We do lose a little bit of money and stuff, but let's try and make a strategy here. Your strategy is gonna depend on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to get a fast time? Are you trying to do the least amount of cash? In this case, it's gonna be least tiers. And so what we're 
were to do here is we're actually gonna go for a dartling right here right? we're gonna go for a dartling and we're gonna plop it down like trying to find a good spot maybe right there let's just go right there and the reason we're going darling here is because darling is not something that really needs cross pass all right cross pass are really really good don't get me wrong here but if we go for hydro rocket pods that will be three upgrades and three upgrades is really really good the thing about least tiers is it doesn't factor in how much cash you're spending so if you get a one triple dart with the cross path that's six upgrades, all right? It's one tier for placing down the Dart Monkey, and then it's five upgrades total, right? If you get up an Apache Prime by placing down one Heli and then upgrading it five times, that is the same exact thing. That's the same amount of tiers here. And so it's all about getting tier fives and then avoiding cross paths if you can with least tiers. So what we're gonna try and do here is we're gonna try and go for middle path here. So we're gonna get it anyway, so you might as well just get it up. But another thing to know is that time does not matter at all. We're not gonna do this, but let's say you're using the mortar, all right? And instead of getting extra tiers, you micro the mortar like 10 times per round. Even if the round takes an hour long, that does not matter. It's not about time. Time. it's all about the tiers now thing to know is that we do have the powers category here and we do have two glue traps ready to use whenever we want and i believe these glue traps last on the map forever and they glue quite a few balloons here so we'll try and use this if we can because if we can use those glue traps instead of getting up an extra tier that's a huge advantage for us all right look at this we got a checkpoint right there and so every 20 rounds you're gonna get a checkpoint all right and we're starting to struggle a little bit so let's go for faster barrel spin right now and we'll try and go for hydro rocket pods when we can but every 20 rounds you're gonna get a checkpoint which means that you're able to go back to where you were the exact time the exact tiers exact defense on round 20 40 or 60 depending Depending on how long the challenge went the longest challenge i've seen so far is like 80. teammates send a new score to beat oh no so basically on the map there's supposed to be smoke to show when someone else is taking a tile but we didn't see it there but basically someone just beat this tile while we're beating it here and they use 24 tiers 24 upgrades total so if this was the real thing right here we would probably quit right now because we want to save our tickets all right tickets are only used when you make progress and stuff meaning that if you complete a challenge but you didn't beat the opponent like let's say we beat this challenge in 25 tiers it would not count at all it would not use a ticket but honestly unless you're doing a relic or banner tile in a very competitive area you don't want to work on tiles that you've already captured unless they're very weak right this tile just got taken so taking it again is completely unnecessary we're still going to do it for the sake of the video here but you want to just keep an eye out for things but now we got hydro rocket bot so let's just do this here and then we'll just aim it back and forth depending on where the balloons are now something to know is that if you're taking a tile the same time as an opponent and they get a new high score while you're taking it this this score will update to match it so if someone on another team beat this and say 15 tiers it would update to 15 tiers and so if you're doing a challenge and you use 16 tiers and then someone beats it with 15 tiers while you're doing it it'll update to say you're already behind like and that's pretty rough especially if you spent a lot of time in the challenge so it's really important to try and optimize no matter what now something really important to factor in is the end round right now we will have a moab in round 40 but we go up to round 48 which means after the round 40 moab there's no other moabs so we're getting pretty far in the challenge here and now it's trying to think about will we have to upgrade any more in this challenge because if we can just finish this challenge here without any more upgrades that'd be fantastic all right we use four upgrades total but worst case scenario all we have to do is upgrade to rocket storm rocket storm is actually better for this challenge than just getting a cross path here because cross path if we get a cross path that's two upgrades get rocket storm it's one upgrade here all about getting expensive upgrades here so what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and hold off as long as we can and then if we're ever struggling we will use rocket storm and since we're two rounds from round 40 remember round 40 we will get a checkpoint all right and so once we get past round 40 we can be pretty reckless but if we lose right now we go all the way back to round 20 which is ridiculous so we don't want to do that something to also know is that going back to a checkpoint does cost monkey money but it's not super expensive like right here it's 100 for round 20 all right hydro rocket pods is doing so good here it's just towers where you don't really need the cross path are really effective so tell you what we're gonna lose here because we, we lost to that right there so we game over no ticket used right here so now we can restart completely we can go back or we can retry from round 40 so we're gonna try in round 40 here and now we know we're starting to mow up here so let's get up a rocket storm rocket storm is gonna do really good here assuming we can get it off cooldown here so let's try and pop it down here come on don't want a cross path here so tell you what we're gonna do let's look for glue like there and then we're gonna rocket storm. Come on, pop it down. Sai. Oh, Sai stuns Moabs. Perfect. Come on. Okay, Sai popping that down. Come on. And we do defend that. Beautiful. And that was perfect right there. We did get the rocket storm, unfortunately. But we've only done six tiers, which is super cool. Also, there's a bug right there. We just reset, and it reset the least tiers. It says no score set when someone has set the score. So at this point, let's just play it safe and place down the glue trap. Remember, it costs no money or tiers to use the glue trap. So if you have it, you might as well use it. All right, so we're on the last round here. And I think beating this tier count would be really, really difficult and stuff. Like, you probably could do it and stuff. But we planned things really, really well. So there's a victory right there. We got the blue thingy. And then it shows you your stats, just like the challenge. And then we got tile captured, all right? So your score, score to beat we beat the score to beat here so the new score is gonna be six a ticket has been used because we did get a new score and then we get 100 monkey money 12 team leaderboard things and then 10 individual leaderboard things i think so we go back here look at this all right every single tile that's been updated while we're doing the challenge does get showcased you can click off of it if you do want to um but we're just gonna watch it just because it's satisfying look at this isn't this cool and know that there's only six people per team at the moment here all right there's gonna be 15 people per team when the actual challenge goes live and so this board is gonna be going crazy it'll be so cool to see how it's changed so look right here it's pretty 
pretty even right here. Pink's struggling a little bit. You see Pink's small right there. And then we're doing okay, all right? We're in second right here. Pink is actually ahead somehow, but you get points both for capturing the tile and for maintaining it and stuff. And so over time, we should overtake Pink. So let's take a look at the leaderboards here, right? We have local teams and players here, which I assume means within your own country. But if you look at the players here, we're 11th out of everyone, all right? We've got 210 of that individual contribution currency. And at the top, we got someone with 2,000. Look at that. We also have a global teams leaderboard. And I assume this leaderboard would be for all teams in BTD6, not just the ones that are on your board. It just so happens that there's only six teams at this time. All right, so there's the tile. Our tile has been taken. It's now purple here. And some fog just disappeared right there. But you see this fog right here? This fog means that someone's taking the tile and stuff. So if I'm deciding where to spend my tickets here, I don't want to spend them on this one here because someone's already taking this tile. Why should I take it? But you look over here, you can see a red person is taking this tile. You got the fog and you got the red right there. And so it's really cool. You can survey the board and just see what's happening. You know, the blue team's taking this tile and like, it's so cool. So before we take over another tile, let's check out the my team tab right here. All right, so we got my art. We got our team right here. And so look at this. We got everyone in our team right here. And there's actually a lot of people. There's more than six per team. So that's my bad. But there's the roster right there. And you can see people's profiles, of course. Now we also have this icon right here where we can add friends here, right? We can do this and we can send someone a friend request. And if you go up here to your friends tab, you can see your friends right here. So we're friends at Spool right now. And this is cool. The game is going more and more multiplayer. So you got this friends tab right here. Now we also have a messages tab right here. And the messages tab is not for chatting, unfortunately, but it's a log that shows everything that's going on in the clan. But it's a log that shows everything going on in the team here. So it doesn't seem like it shows updated scores or taking neutral tiles. It only shows taking or losing tiles from other teams. But if you look right here, look at all these relic tiles we just lost, you know, within the last 20 minutes. And then if you click one of these, it should go to the tile probably. It's not going right now. Maybe that's a bug. But this is just a log of all the action right here. It does show when you capture neutral banner tiles. So yeah, so neutral tiles do not go in the log here. It's only relic and banner tiles. You can also see who has joined the team right here, right? So we got Katie and Spool. And look at this, the Brickle Battlers team was created by Twitchy Dingo. Twitchy Dingo, thank you so much. Now if you look up here, we got our banner right here. And this is managed by the mayor, which I assume is Twitchy Dingo. We're called Brickle's Battlers. We're a public team. Anyone can join. And then we got this icon right here. And your icon will actually be shown on the map, except this is red team right here. Red team's trying to draw a line through our territory. Now, if you look up here, we also have leaderboard medals for the team, which I assume they go on individual profiles as well. But that's cool. There's clan badges right here. And so these four right here are local badges. And then we got global badges right here for percentages. And then top 100, 25, third, second, first. Look at those badges. Those are clean. Those are beautiful. Now, if you look in the upper right, you can see a team code. And every single team is going to have a team code. So here's the team browser right here. You can see the score for the current contested territory event. And you see all the teams. You can see friends teams. And you can also see requests that you've gotten. And I assume requests that you've seen. Up here, we have team search bar and you can filter it. And then you also disable and enable requests here. You can also click this I button to view other people's teams. So here's another team right here. This is so cool. This is so exciting. Like, oh my gosh, Ninja Kitty completely outdid themselves. The next day. All right, so it's the next day now. I went to go to eat dinner and I got a little tired here. So we're going to pop back into things with a harder challenge here. But first, let's see how much contested territory has changed here, right? Oh, look at the home screen right here. So we got contested territory here and here are the instructions for it if you guys want to read those. But let's check on the map here. What do we got? Oh my gosh. Yellow team is going absolutely ham here. But look at us. Look at purple here. We've gone all the way across the map here. This is insane. Now, if you look at our challenge from yesterday, our score still stands here. But since no one else has contested it, it's been degrading here. So now it's 18 tiers. And look at our relic knowledge here. We got, we still got the Moab one. We got this new one. All tax can pop purple balloons. All right. All tax do plus one damage to camel balloons. And then we got the range one still. Perfect. So our tickets have now replenished. You get four per day normally, but we got 20 right now just to showcase. But let's pop into a match now. And we're not going to do a neutral tile, all right? Neutral tile is good and stuff. But let's pop into another challenge here. And let's try and do a tile that's already been taken and one that's a relic or banner tile. And I'm thinking this one right here because we have the new map right here, Quarry. So it's a medium one and this is a timed one. I'm just going to be transparent. I've barely done any races and I've tried a few racing tiles and they've been nearly impossible to capture here. So we're going to try our best to beat this time here, but it might take a second because races are really difficult. But this tile is held by Benjamin's Band with, with Kiwi Novus 1217 and it's a relic tile here. So if we take this, we get Deep Heat, which all attacks can pop white balloons. But if you look at the rules here, we got Selling Disabled, all right? Every now and then you see one little modifier or one little thing. And we cannot sell for this race here. So we have to keep that in mind. But let's enable a relic knowledge here and give this tile a shot here. All right, look at that. This is, oh my gosh, I have not seen this new map before. So this is really cool. So let's just see really quick, where can we place stuff on the new map here, right? Just place it there, there. And it looks like the balloons are zigzagging back and forth here. So a pretty long map here, honestly. Can't click on anything, okay. I love it, it looks so beautiful. But let's think about what we wanna do here, right? We're going to round 63 here, so that's pretty long. If we have to make a plan, I would say possibly Blade Mousetrons, but let's go for more Glaze. More Glaze is absolutely juicy. Now the Engineer Paragon is out, but Ninja Kiwi instructed us to only showcase contested territory. And so we're not allowed to show it until the update comes 
comes out. Because of that, I have not looked at it because I want to showcase my genuine reaction once it comes out. This map's actually really interesting here because look, you can't go up the path. So if we have like a glaive ricochet here, it's not gonna be able to travel up the waterfall. But it is a race here. We want to go fast here. So let's go for how about right here? Let's go right here to play it safe. And then we're gonna go for a wizard here for the D camo. So let's go for a wizard like right here. And now we're gonna start. So I'm not familiar with races. We're gonna start with a few balloons off the map. Look at the balloons waving. Oh, that's silly. Okay, so we're trying to do this here. Hopefully we don't lose here. Um, one thing to know is that there's no checkpoints at all in race modes and stuff, right? So if you lose, you have to go all the way back to the start, which does make sense. And then if you look at the upper right, we have the race clock right here, and it times down from the time that you're trying to beat. So just gonna chill here. We gotta be very careful here. It, it, races are very dangerous here. Let's keep spamming balloons here. We are gonna leak down quite a bit right here. It's okay if we leak down as long as we don't leak down to zero lives here. Honestly, starting with fireball it seems like the place. So let's go for fireball right here. We just beat the rounds. So we got a bunch of extra cash, and let's stop right there. We just got a ton of balloons here. Let's try not to lose here, and let's go for this, and we'll go for bottom path here. Come on, try not to lose here. All right, we're gonna go for wallfire first. Glaive ricochet is good, but it's slightly more expensive. We just gotta get a wallfire. Wallfire is gonna do so good here. The question is, can we survive without losing here? And remember, we can't sell for this challenge here it does spice things up a little bit because right now honestly you could sell the boomerang for the wall fire and that'd probably be the play that'd be a really good play right there something else to note is that our glue relic tile disappeared so we no longer have the glue but it doesn't look like you can use powers in race mode anyway but look at this wall fire is absolutely destroying this is super good here so right now we're just gonna rush a little bit here we can take the camel balloon so actually let's not go for camera detection until we need to and actually we could take the camel balloon here so let's not go for camera detection until round 33 here let's just try our make way towards glaive ricochet we're getting a ton of money here and something really cool is we have the purple relic knowledge right we can pop purple balloons with wall fire probably so let's try and see that in action here we'll rush to round 25 here we should get some purple loons coming up here um we can go for we can go for monkey sense why not we'll get that up and we'll start going for shimmer here we should see some purple loons. another team set a new score to beat uh-oh i can't believe it's still active right now like all right there's the purple balloons can wall fire pop purple balloons come on buddy there it goes wizard is popping purple balloons look at that that's fantastic all right we still could start going for blade mouse but we're just gonna take this nice and slow we have 12 minutes 12 minutes is a lot of time here so i'm not sure if the timer went down when the other team set a score to beat there are some bugs currently when someone's beating a challenge the same time as you so we'll have to keep an eye on that all right we almost have more glaives we basically have more glaives here so we're gonna start rushing a little bit we're gonna take a little bit of a risk here and we're gonna start getting a ton of rounds here we want to be very conscientious with a few things like the moab around 40 is gonna be difficult round 38 has ceramics on it and so let's go all the way up to like round 38 or so and then we'll think about what we need to do i'd say operation dark Storm. Operation Dark Storm has the missile, which is really good at popping Moabs, and there's a lot of room on this map. And on top of that, it can just help clean up balloons really well here. So, we got some camp balloons here. Let's start to go for Shimmer. All right, look at Wallfire. Look at Wallfire right there. And then everything that's missing, more glaives will just clean up easy peasy here. So, let's start right away towards the ace here. Ace is super duper good here. And then we'll start speeding up. Let's go for round 39 here, which is a little bold here. We might lose here if we're not careful, but more glaives should clean up. More glaives is really powerful and really expensive here. So, we'll go for this. We'll try at least get up a fire plane here. We don't really need Operation Dark Storm necessarily. We just need something that's going to help pop the Moab layer down because these things are really good for balloon pond power but not really moab pond power here so go for fighter plane there we go can we get operation dart storm soon we did pop the strength let's just go for it oh look at that moab came from this side let's go for this um we can go for sharper darts here there we go and we should hopefully be good right there with the fighter plane right there come on more glaives pop it down and we are good right there. A little bit sketch right there, but at least we got the camera section here. So Moabs come from the right side. So we'll continue speeding things up here because boomerang's really good. And right now, let's focus on more boomerangs here. Let's, in fact, let's go for let's go for boomerang up top and see what happens here. All right, let's, let's go for like ricochet and see if we can go down the map here. So we're gonna spam up to round 49 here. Round 50 has some Moabs here. There's some strats. Come on, can the more glaives go down? And it doesn't look like it can. Oh no, it is going down. It is. So it can go down. That's interesting right there. Come on. Did we overwhelm ourselves here? Yeah, look at this. It can shoot down the track, but not up the track. That's really interesting interesting look at our money though we're rolling in the dough here we want to start speeding things up here let's go for a blade maelstrom and then we can go for what are oh, we have so much money here let's just go for more aces and we'll go for one with chaos action maybe I don't know if that matters. We don't need chaos action here, but we can really speed this up now. We got a lot of stuff here. We got Blade Maelstrom here. Round 63 is going to be a little sketch here. So let's go for one more Blade Maelstrom before we go for round 63 here because it, let's do this Blade Maelstrom here. There's a lot of balloons. There we go. Get the Blade Maelstrom up because round 63 is very deadly here. Let's do this. There we go. And now let's go for round 63. I'll take a, take a small risk here. We got our stuff here. All these routes coming along. Look at all the Cerax right here. Morglaze is absolutely fantastic. We're going to use one Blade Maelstrom right there. It helps shred through these rounds. And we dove another Maelstrom here. Let's go for... Oh, shoot. Did we overwhelm ourselves? We have a Blade Maelstrom back. Blade Maelstrom saving the day here. We got a bunch of Camelettes here from round 59 here. Can we defend here? Oh, my gosh. This is ridiculous here. We need our Blade Maelstroms back here. Blade Maelstrom is back. Blade Maelstrom saving the day right there. We should be good with all our aces right there. And now it's just about finishing up here. And GG, we beat that with a ton of time to spare there. And granted, the person who beat this initially, maybe they got a really good time and then the time just decayed over time. But 
Now we have the new relic tile that we to pop white balloons, which probably isn't that useful, but you know, maybe there's an ice challenge. GG's, beautiful. And now since there's a relic tile, it is now in the log right here. So we got top here, captured a relic tile from Benjamin's band and added deep heat to the team relic list. Way to go, let's go. I love how much the map has changed. Right now we're gonna go through the entire map here and just look at the entire map because it's so beautiful. So first thing to know is you see all these white outlines here. These show tiles that you can attack and tiles just have to be adjacent to your tiles. Meaning that even though we aren't connected to our home base here, we can still attack like, you know, way up here if we want to. But we can't attack other people's home bases right here. This is just a tile. Every team keeps at least one tile on the board guaranteed. Now with the map, if you drag to the outside all the way, you can see just water right here. There's beautiful water right here. And it is moving. Look at that. Beautiful. And then when you zoom in, it comes towards the middle here. And you can see every single base in like 3D here. Look at We got trees, barrels. This is so cool. And then look at this. If you click a tile, it like bounces here. And so we can just go like, isn't this cool? This is just so cool. And just bouncing around, looking at the map and stuff. And I love how just every single time you check the map, it's different. Every single time. And once there's 90 people on the board, it's going to be changing even more. Someone's taking this tile here. Okay. Now, if you look right here, we got fog right here because someone's taking this tile. But if you look under that, we have some flowers right here. And every single tile has its own terrain, which is contained within its own tile. So first, we got no terrain here, right? No terrain is just random maps, like whatever you got. But then we got these flowers right here. Look at the flowers right here, right? So we got logs, which is a nature map. We got a Dora's temple right here, which does have flowers on the outside here. If you do look, at that we've got grass here we got grass here and so all these flowers are grassy nature maps then we got tree tiles right here and these ones are like forest areas we have the blunaris map we have log cabin we have the halloween map which is kind of weird encrypted we also got this racetrack tile which is really weird here we got hedge we got racetrack which makes sense we got cubism and then circles map which makes sense after the rock ones we got the new map quarry and so this kind of makes sense right you got you, terrain does actually affect it right the snow maps are really on theme look at this all these contain snow also while editing i realized i forgot to showcase water tiles so those will be showcased at the end of the video now if you look at the right we have two buttons right here we have a search right here where you can search our tops so we go for tile aaa press enter now we got tile aaa and we actually own tile aaa it's our home base but if we go for aaf there we go aaf and so this middle column is the aa column so if we want to go one up we can go aag Boom, one up. Now we also have this other tile right here, which is a visual tile right here. And if you do that, it identifies every single team with a shape here. That's kind of weird. I'm not really sure what this does here and stuff, because it's already really easy to see which teams own what. So that's what that does, I guess. Also, that I know is there's no neutral tiles left. Look at this, no neutral tiles. But that does not mean there will always be no neutral tiles, because remember, tiles do decay after 24 hours. Well, let's just zoom in really quick and just enjoy this, all right? Look at this, we got the ace right there. Look how cool this looks, all right? I cannot, like, the boss is right there. They got 3D models for everything. You can see the side, just the peripheral change on everything right here. And you can just explore the map. This is just so cool looking. It's so, so cool looking. And then down to the right, we got all six teams. And we can use this arrow to hide them if we do want to. But now let's see if we try a boss tile. And we got a boss tile right here, which is a banner tile, which we have not done yet. So if you look right here, it's held by Sons of Quincy. And we have Omen this time. Omen is chosen for us. We have two tiers of Blunarius here, which I've never done Blunarius. I, I've never done it. So this will be interesting here. It says we got custom rounds here, which is interesting. Oh, wait, that's just the boss. Oh, look, there's little info cards right here destroy the boss as quickly as possible to win the tile let's do it so here's the plan for now we're gonna do the boss tile and then we'll showcase everything else on the map and then we'll jump into a few harder challenges all right we've done pretty easy challenges so far these are actually really difficult towers for this map i do not know how to do this we're gonna try and rely on spike factory let's go for open like right here there you go and we'll start doing this so boss beers in 35 rounds we know want to be two tiers on here right and so is that round 40 round 60 i believe so we'll go for attack right here all right attack is just value right here we got the time here just like a normal boss event fit plus 53 seconds and our goal is to keep it underneath this 43 minute time right here now something else to know is that these towers and rounds are all randomly generated all right and ninja kiwi is working really hard to try and make sure that every single tile is possible because there's no human verifying it's not like the challenge browser where every single challenge is verified they're giving a variety of towers just to make sure that you don't get stuck with you know like ice farm village or something right but as for the heroes it's not completely random with each challenge you can get a hero you can get no hero or you can choose your own hero but some heroes are banned for certain challenges like for example least tears soda is one of those heroes that can solo everything all right like she did one tower chimps back in the day right and so if you're doing least tiers all you have to do is plop down soda and you get like one or two tiers right i just want to clarify this all i can confirm is that soda is banned for some challenges i don't know if she's banned for every challenge and i don't know if any other heroes are banned as well okay we reached a checkpoint right there because this is not a race we do get checkpoints every 20 rounds which is actually really good and so if you don't care about your monkey money you might as well greet as much as you can after round 20 and round 40 because you can just checkpoint back really easily oh look at this this one tack shooter is doing so good here all right let's go for a ring of fire here ring of fire is gonna help out a ton look at that spot it's like basically on the track 
track. Okay, Obin's soloing all the candle balloons here. Look at this. We really don't have good candle detection here. You really have to adapt for these challenges here because normally in any scenario, you just get up a village with their attack and be done easy peasy. But we have very little candle detection here. So honestly, let's go for a spike factory. Spike factory just sounds good. So we'll go for a nice spike factory, right? Let's do it up here. All right, even though we'll lose a little bit of time and stuff, it'll just be a little bit safer. So let's go for a nice spiked balls right there just to capture anything that's sneaking past. Oh no, you're not supposed to go top path. In, in BTD Battles 2, you're supposed to go top path with the marketplace. So I've been going the wrong cross path. I'm sorry about that. So how are we going to pop down the boss moon as much as possible? And I'm going to say spike storm. Spike storm is just super good in general, but it's the only like strong tower we have really. really. Like tack and boomerang are good, but they're not good on this map. This map is a very, very difficult map for certain towers here. So we're going to rely on the spike factory. So let's go for a nice spike factory right here. And we'll start making our way towards a spike storm here. All right, here we go. Checkpoint reach right there. There is blue Narius. Look at it. It's so cute. It's so cute right there. Anyway, let's go for this right here. We definitely want the top cross right here. Let's go for bigger stacks. And then we'll start using this. We'll go for brambles here. Come on, buddy. We got balloons right there. And we, we did a little bit of damage right there. I think we're going to be fine here. I'm not super worried, but we do want to be careful here. So we'll start going for another spike factory here. We do spike balls on the back just to help out here. We're not doing that much damage here, but Blunaris is so slow here, we'll probably be fine. Like, we can just deal a little bit of damage over time. I don't believe stalls work on Blunaris and stuff, right? So let's not go for sabotage necessarily. Sorry if I'm wrong about that, but we could go for Master Bomber. Master Bomber would be really good because Master Bomber has infinite range. Remember, ooh, there's a lot of ceramics right there. Are we going to lose right there? We do have a checkpoint. If we do lose, we did lose right there. Let's go back to the checkpoint. That's fine. So we didn't even lose to Blunaris right there. We just lost to the normal balloons right there. So let's go for a nice... We could go for Glaive Ricochet. Hmm. Yeah, I think Glaive Ricochet is probably going to be the play right here. Even though it might not work super well on this map here. Let's try it though. Because maybe it can sneak inside these things, right? So let's go for this right here. Bottom path. We'll go for a nice more glaze right there to help out. And hopefully we survive this time. Come on. There we go. Look at more glaze cleaning up that round. Beautiful. The thing is, can we pop Lunaris though? We need to pop Lunaris here though. So we'll go for you. We'll go for middle path on you. I think boss tiles are probably gonna be the hardest one here because you need to know how to beat bosses and stuff because with all the other tiles, you can literally just play normally if it's a neutral tile and you'll be fine here. Come on, defend that. More Glaive's doing absolutely fantastic here. But if it's a boss tile, you still have to beat the boss. And we did defeat the boss right there. Boss is coming around 60 here. So we have to just defeat the next boss and then we'll be fine here. So we don't have to plan for defeating like our tier 5 Blunaris here. We only have to be a tier 2, which is really, really nice here. So let's go for... Just because ceramics are difficult here, let's go for another more Glaze right here. Just to be safe here, we'll go for that. And we'll be sure to sell our farms eventually. But let's just go for as many Spike Storms as possible here. I think that's going to be the play here. I don't think we can afford Master Bomber time. Maybe we can. Tell you what, let's sell all this stuff. And let's go for Central Market here. Let's try and get a Master Bomber. With that be a crazy idea because master Bomber would be defeated really really quickly we got a really good time then a little bit of time here. we're still under a minute this is super duper good right here all right we got camos right here actually actually that's a problem let's go for spike storm if we can get it up in time we might lose here come on spike factory we do defend right there one spiked balls defending all those camels right there fantastic all right master Bomber is 34k so we actually can't afford it here the question is how many shinobis can we get around it we're gonna try and get as many shinobis around it we actually kind of have a lot of demons actually we don't have infinite towers here look at that we just hit the tower limit here so we have to we have to plan things very carefully here but tell you what just for the sake of speed here this might not be the right play but let's just sell and get a master bomber now it'll be fun we got master bomber right there and now let's go for as many shinobis as possible here we do have a tower limit though all right blue Nerys right there checkpoint is reached around 60 though so if we do struggle here that's fine let's go for spike storm let's do that um we can sell the glaives and the spike factory here because we're just chilling um, we have Master Bomber out. Hopefully, actually, maybe we should have kept up one. Let's go for one Blade Master Bomber. Actually, yo, we did it. We have round 60 coming up. What the heck? Okay, let's Bloon Sabotage here. Let's Spike Storm. There we go. Come on, Master Bomber. Do your thing. Master Bomber can't see the Blunarius. It's struggling here. Finally, Master Bomber is now attacking. It's now on the Blunarius. And now we're starting to get some good damage here. We are starting to leak down a little bit, though. Some balloons are getting past the Spike Factory. We need a Spike Factory... Let's put the Spike Factory all the way in the back here just to play it safe a little bit. Keep Maelstrom here. We need the Maelstroms. Good stuff. All right, we got it right there. Beautiful. Blunaris does go down right there. We have to finish up this round, unfortunately. Come on, finish up the round. And we do defeat Blunaris right there. Beautiful. That tile is ours. And the tile has been captured there. All right, look at that. We just demolished that soil. That was beautiful. The board has been changing a little bit here. All right. All right, so we have one more tile category left to show. And that's going to be least cash here. But before we do that, let's check out the team store right here. We haven't showcased that right here. And apparently it's supposed to be broken a little bit. And you can see it's broken right here. We got Moab Clash. Like, this is kind of weird. Looks like you can thumbs up them or something. We got this. So they all have descriptions here. Oh, this is cool right here. So we have team trophies right here. And you can vote on which ones to go for right here. All right. So we have a daily power right here which is a monkey boost right here we can contribute what does that mean we need 200 let's spend 200 trophies here this might be ridiculous here but we're gonna try it see what that does funded time remaining 24 hours here what did that do we have these other things to buy here and then we got the team store right here look at this look how many cosmetics 
Yo, wait, 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 wait. This is actually so crazy right here. Well, let's go through this right here. We have a battle monkey right here. Cozy campfire. Can you customize your like tiles and stuff and like have tribal tortoise from BTD5? Oh my gosh. Oh, you need a lot of trophies for these. These are really expensive here. But you know what this is for? This is for this. We can decorate our clan and have our own little base here. That's so cool. But just feast your eyes. All right, we got banners here. We got frames right here. We got a lot of icons down here. So much customization. That's so cool. But the coolest thing here is content contribution all right team trophies i believe these are for us we have 259 and so it looks like buying things is to sit oops oh i guess we just contributed all right so now we have 259 is the joyful banner i didn't mean to do that there but what's really cool is no you're not forced to spend things one way or another you have to coordinate with your team what are we gonna buy here and these things are really expensive here and so you want to all contribute to one not just split yourselves between multiple here so oh no way you do have to choose between relics and team players these are just cosmetic these do not matter in the slightest relics actually affect the map here and so you do actually want to go for relics over team flares probably but the thing is you have so many people in your team that you'll max out on this really quickly especially if everyone's doing their progress like you will go for team flares at the same time here so team star greetings brave adventurer you've entered the realm bosses you can read that if you want actually this got a bugger here you see the boss descriptions we also have an inventory right here nothing in there okay so something also really interesting is that you can't completely see a tile unless you're next to it right here we can see the tile we can see the challenge and stuff it's right there but for this one right here we can't click on it and we can't see which relic it is we can only see some basic stats about it but we want to get to this tile because i was contesting this tile yesterday and it's really competitive all right it has gone up a little bit but it's a really difficult tile so we'll try and go for it here so now we have to go for at least cash tile here and it's kind of difficult because everyone was playing yesterday but overnight all the times went up and stuff and so things are way less competitive which is great because if you're trying to take a tile it's a lot easier you don't have to spend hours trying to take one tile but what we're going to do here is we're gonna go for one more least tiers tile and then we're gonna go for this tower here but we're gonna go for a very very low score here so here's the tile we're gonna go for first and it's a least tiers tile right here and we get the rounding up relic tile right here earn 20 dollars at the end of every round Ooh, that could add up a little bit and stuff like none of the relics are like super op and stuff you know now the daily power is bugged right here so here they spent all our trophies on it we don't actually get it right now and also forgot to talk about this but look you can vote right here right so we can vote on the ones that we want to like keep and we can kind of coordinate because there's no chat for your team you cannot coordinate the only way you can coordinate is by voting and so I can see a lot of teams creating discord servers or group chats just to try and coordinate things but here's the title we're gonna go for here but look score degrades in seven seconds here so let's just see how much the score degrades here right 33 tiers down to it's at zero here so we're gonna go in and out here we still got 33 tiers here go in and out here really quick degrade oh there it goes beautiful three tiers and then it'll degrade again in an hour and five minutes all right that's pretty juicy right there so what we're gonna do here is we have 33 tiers which is a lot oh no it still says 33 tiers even though it degraded here that's a bug now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try and beat this challenge as low tiers as possible just to show what a competitive tie would look like but right now it's not competitive at all so it's not about upgrades it's about tiers here and so what we're gonna do here is darling served us really really well yesterday so we could use that bow is really good but you need the cross path on it all right so here's what i'm thinking let's go for a wizard here we'll go middle path dragon's breath because look at the rounds right here we do not have to defend bfbs it's only moabs here which is really good so let's go right here we'll go fireball we'll go for wall fire here in a little bit and then we'll get a rocket store in the back with maybe heli support i'm so excited to make videos on this though it contested terror is just so cool there's so much to do and every single challenge is new and, and fresh and especially when there's a lot of contention you can get some really difficult challenge here which is really exciting because oftentimes in the challenge browser we start doing a challenge and stuff for a video and stuff and we end up beating it a little bit too quickly and stuff and it doesn't really make for a strong video of course sometimes in the challenge browser we do a challenge and we can't solve it after three hours now as a total review of contested territory right now it is so fun it is so fun the map is the shining star of everything and stuff all right like it's so weird to talk about art over gameplay but the art is so cool on the map the cosmetics the stuff like this is going to change bloons forever here and stuff but for the foreseeable future we're gonna have contested territory events left and right and stuff and the event is just so fun it's so cool there's all this stuff to do here and then ninja kiwi could have made it like a six person event you know everyone gets their own things everyone takes their own tiles but they went up and beyond and they made teams they made things multiplayer we have 90 people per map 90 people and it's just so cool it's so fun and it's just so interactive like bt6 is really really good but up to this point it felt pretty single player all right like with co-op you can play with friends and stuff or you can sometimes play with randoms if you want to but for the most part you're playing on your own it's a solo game and that was the big appeal of BT Battles 1 and 2 for a long time. You know, it's the head-to-head -head way to play Bloons. But now, with Contested Territory, we have multiplayer BTD6. And it's just so cool. Coordinate with the clan and stuff. And in a way, you're not just competing against other teams. You're competing with your own clanmates to see who can contribute the most. And who can get certain badges and stuff. Because badges are really cool and stuff. But when you can flex badges on your clanmates, then they just matter so much more. Like, now your profile actually matters. Because all your clanmates are going to be viewing it. Now, Ninja Kiki also asked for feedback. And I'll try and share as much as you can directly. But, but right here, just to get feedback, it's awesome. It, it's amazing. It's 
perfect. It's, the, it's a great event, but if I had to give criticism at all, all right, we are strong a little bit here. Let's go for Rocket Storm right here. Just help out a little bit, and then we'll start aiming you. Okay, Rocket Storm, beautiful. This isn't necessarily a criticism, but I do have to note that the tiles are very long and stuff. If you are going to take a tile, it is going to take you a chunk of time. Like in the challenge browser, most of the challenges are one round challenges, and it's about figuring out how to do it, not necessarily just putting in the time. These challenges, you're going anywhere from rounds one to nine to like rounds 42 to 80. Note that banner tiles and relic tiles are a little bit more difficult. Yo, look at our money right here. Let's try not to go for Summon Phoenix here. We have Dragon's Breath. We will go for it if we need to. But if you have four tickets per day, and granted, you don't have to use all your tickets, but if you have four tickets per day and it's taking you, say, I don't know, let's be generous and let's say five minutes per challenge. Five minutes per challenge is way too short, but that means you're spending 20 minutes per day playing BT6. And, and that's not bad considering right now, Contested Terror does not feel like work. Sometimes in games of clans, there's a lot of pressure to do your battles because it's like, you know, contribute to the team, get the good rewards and stuff. But sometimes it's like not, sometimes you're just doing it for the rewards and not for fun. Contested Territory is, and it's got good rewards. Actually, we got to review the rewards. I don't know if we can see them yet. But the thing is, you're, you are spending a lot of time using up your tickets. And then on top of that, if you lose in a challenge, your ticket is not used and stuff. And so legit, sometimes you'll be trying to take a tile, you'll spend an hour on it and you won't take it and stuff. And all that time you put in, granted, you'll know a lot more, but it won't have contributed. And that's why having time as a grade is really, really valuable and stuff. Just so people don't have to spend like three hours a day trying to use their tickets and stuff. Like Ninja Game is trying to make it, it's not just the people that put in the most time. But it is important to know, if you are willing to put in the time, you might as well go for the competitive tiles instead of going for easy ones. Especially if you're more experienced and stuff. If there's a new player, new players can take the neutral tiles that haven't been taken yet, easy peasy, not a problem stuff. But for the very competitive tiles, that's where experience and time matters a lot more. All right, look at this. We're in round 56, the last round. No cross path on Dragon's Breath. We actually probably didn't need Dragon's Breath. Maybe we did. I don't know. But look, no cross path on Rocket Storm right here. We did very, very good this challenge right here. And boom, victory right there. Beautiful. Look at that. Nine tiers used out of score to beat was 36. And so the timer up here was incorrect, but the score to beat was correct. Has there been any progress? There has been progress right there. Three tiles have changed. Okay. All right, so we're on the leaderboards here, and it doesn't look like you can see any rewards yet. We know there's badges for sure. And also, look at the banners right here. These are sick. But there's definitely something, right? They'll do something. All right, wait, yo, look at this. All right, so if you go from the home screen, and there's the contested territory icon right there, you click it, and then you click play. Look at this opening animation. It's so cool. Look at that. Beautiful. We kind of replicate that by zooming in and out here. Like, look at that. I love the zoom in feature. This zoom in feature, it is one of the best things about Contested Territory. Like, literally, the gameplay is in stellar. The gameplay is stellar. Everything about Contested Territory I love, but they outdid themselves with the zoom feature. It's so cool. Like, look at just the trees changed. Everything's rendered in 3D. Like, literally, all they had to do, and if you look at the concept art, you can see this. They literally just had to make it like this, you know? And it would have been cool enough. Just seeing all the tiles change and stuff. But what they did is they made 3D and then they made it 169 tiles. Tiles. Like, they really knocked this one out of the park. Like, this is the best update in Bloons history. Every single update has been absolutely stellar and stuff. I don't want to diss every single update Ninja Kiwi has done, but my goodness, they really went all out here. This is absolutely incredible. And a huge thank you, Ninja Kiwi, for letting us make a video on this. Like, it is super special. All right, look, Yellow is trying to take this tower right now, and Yellow is the top team right here. We're going to try and take it from them while they're taking it right here. So, it's least cash. We have not done this before, and you get flint tips from this, which we had it earlier, but now we have the $20 relic. So, hopefully, it helps out a little bit. Now, there's a lot of heroes we can use here, but it's about cash here. And yeah, it does say 33 out of 34. We are missing one hero skin here, and that's the Voidora skin. We're not allowed to showcase that in this video, unfortunately. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stick with Sai. Sai is really good on this map because Sai can attack anywhere on the map without aiming. And that's really good because we want to clear as little corner as possible here. Now, the problem here is that when we originally took this tile, we were using the glue power up really heavily, and we don't have that glue power up anymore. So this is gonna be a lot more difficult here. But because it's cash and not least tiers, now we can get cross pass if they actually matter and stuff. You know, for example, with the tax shooter, might as well get that cross path up. So we're gonna do something kind of interesting here, and we're gonna start things off on and we're going to start things off by leaking down on round two here and stuff. Getting up side early is really important because remember, heroes upgrade without taking up costs and stuff. Heroes are really valuable because you can get upgrades without contributing to the cost. So we're going to let all this through. So we're going to take a risk here and let everything through here. We should be able to afford Psy next round, right? Psy will go for Psy like here. There we go. And look, Psy is going to start shredding the balloons. We'll eventually set Psy on strong here, but let's just keep Psy on first for now. Do leak down right there. Now there's a few things we can go for here and look at this. We go to round 57, so it's just like the last challenge, honestly, with one more round. So we know the rounds pretty well here but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go for attack all right wing of fire is gonna be really good against tons of balloons here the only problem is attack cannot hit camel balloons and so the way we compensate for that is by going for the ace here we're gonna go for one operation dart storm here and then maybe an alchemist buff to help out and that's hopefully how we're gonna beat this challenge with the least amount of cash possible and also the reason we're going attack is because we want to get that ring of fire lead balloons are really difficult to defend with these towers here besides alchemist but alchemist is not really a popping tower it's a support tower right i guess glue could work we do have options here but attack looks like a really strong option here. so we're gonna go for attack for this lead palm power here now here's another reason size good if we press their ability we can 
freaking stun all balloons right there. Look at that. But I'm really loving Psy here. Like, I know I ripped off them at the beginning of the video, but like, so one thing we're not gonna go for here is farms. Farms are actually really, really good in the boss tiles. But besides that, you're really not gonna use farms because they give extra cash, but you're trying to spend the least amount of cash possible. So it's literally just hurting your chances because you can't already beat the challenge without farms. All right, checkpoint reached. Another really good tip here is take advantage of your life count right here, right? So next round we have camo balloons right here. And Psy might be able to hit camo. Can you hit camo? Oh, actually, Psy can. But if Psy could hit camo right there, we just tank the camo balloons right there. Actually, we don't really need to do that here, but you know, take advantage here. We got purple balloons right here. Let's set Psy on strong here. Come on. Beautiful. And let's go for Ring of Fire here. Ring of Fire is going to be really good. And we will go for Bottom Path right here, right? It's 85, 85. It's an extra $170 for a, a lot more value here. Now, we're also going to go for the Ace here, right? Ace is going to be really good for camp detection, but it's also going to help out against Moabs with the Fighter Missile. And then to top it all off, it's not affected by the terrain right here. And so it's a really good tower to go for here. So let's go for the Ace right there. And we'll start making our way towards Operation Dartstrom here. And we'll get some camp detection right now just to help out against round 33 here. But I know it hasn't looked that hard up to this point, but we are going to start to optimize. And it's going to get a lot trickier once we get past round. 40 here something that we do need to do is we need to do a least cash tile that we haven't done before because least cash i'd say is the most strategic one because the tier ones are difficult and stuff because but most people up to this point have been slacking on them like you really don't need to do ooh nearing capture score all right so like so we got two thousand five hundred dollars left but the tiers just aren't as competitive and there's just less options and stuff they're a lot more straightforward whereas with cash you're trying to figure out how to shave every dollar off and so let's say you find a route tile i don't know if this would be one that's like five dollars off every primary tower that could be the difference between winning or losing on a primary tile because if you do the same exact track to someone else, you save a little bit more money. And so with this cash, there's just a lot more options on what to save and stuff. And Ninja Gear did a great job by choosing like, you know, six to eight towers per challenge because there's not too many options to where the challenge just gets easy, but there's enough options to where you actually have to think about what you're purchasing. Like with this tower initially, when we took it yesterday, we took it with $300 left to spare. Like it was very competitive right there. So you want to try and limit. Oh, no, no. Another team sent a new score to beat. Oh no, they beat it with way less. Okay, so here's the deal. I didn't think this would work. I thought we would have to go for at least one alchemist just to help out a little bit. You know, go for one berserker brew right there. And then we beat the challenge with like $700 or so. Now we have to think of something different here. So this is actually interesting here. So if we really try here, we'll still be under. So let's restart here completely and try and figure out how do we beat this challenge with the new cash. Now this cash hasn't updated yet. It's bugged. But if you look here, Banana Squad has beaten this tile with $8,020 here. Oh my gosh. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We could try Geraldo. Yeah, you can see Sada banned here <laughs> all right tell you what let's try quincy here and then what do we go for here eight thousand dollars and you guys have to play the rounds very carefully here because it's not to round 59 we don't have to defend camelette so we don't really have to worry about camelette pine power oh you know what you know what we can do here we're gonna go geraldo here and the reason we're doing this is because ace is really expensive right to get ace to rely on the defend camo you really need to go for operation dart throw and it costs a lot of money in total and then there's no other good camo system besides the ace here besides your hero and so if we go geraldo here we can use the invisibility potion to give camo protection to a tower and because we're only going to round 57 it it is a good solution like if we tank the first cam balloon and honestly we could try and take round 33 too all we're gonna need here is three invisibility potions and that's like 400 dollars here so it's not a problem but let's see here can we get under eight thousand twenty dollars here let's say Geraldo's gonna be like a thousand and then tack is gonna be about four thousand dollars each so we can't go for two ring of fires unfortunately so what if we try glue gunner plus ring of fire i think that's gonna be the play here so let's go for Geraldo nice and early this is gonna be interesting here i'm actually really excited but note that there's a lot of strategy in what tiles you take like like for example right now do i want to take this tile when it was just taken i could take another tile that's a lot easier to take and that's why you to factor in what kind of tile a tile is like this is a relic tile right here and it's a pretty powerful relic tile so we do want this but if there's a really bad relic tile no reason to go for it all right it doesn't give you as much points and stuff there's really no point unless you want to whereas with banner tiles banner tiles give a lot of points and so what you want to do is you want to think about who owns the tile and what kind of tile it is and then also what are your strengths you know like are you really good at boss balloons are you really good at races what is your strength but right now if you're trying to play as sweaty as possible we go for banner or relic tiles owned by the leading team which is yellow and so even though this tile isn't optimal because someone just took it like we could literally just wait like a few hours and then beat it easy peasy it's a good tile to take because yellow team owns it now something also really interesting is that there's no chat but there if you start a discord server for your team you could try oh my gosh what is this oh my gosh that just got lowered i'm gonna say ring of fire plus maybe one glue gunner here this is gonna be really difficult here but let's say you see another clan and you know how to contact them online right you could contact them and be like yo what if we had an alliance like i don't think that will happen especially because there's so many people playing bt6 like it is very unlikely that you will battle people that you know but imagine you coordinate that you know all right so we got geraldo right here we got a lot of stuff right here we have the invisibility potion this lasts 10 rounds here and we'll try and use this around 27 here because we can take the candle in round 24 and then we'll just have an invisibility potion every 10 rounds for the rest of the game but there's so much strategy like imagine with your team it's like coordinating like okay you get these three tiles you get these three tiles like the possibilities are infinite of what you can do with teams and it's really exciting that more team features are coming in the future too taking the camel balloon all right so we have two thousand three hundred dollars left to spend what do we want to go for here i'm gonna say alchemist 
Wait, wait, big brain play. All right, did you see that we just pop over balloons? Neither Geraldo or Ring of Fire can pop over balloons. And so let's use our relics here. Let's try something crazy and let's go for Alchemist buff on Ring of Fire right here. And then see if Ring of Fire can solo up to round 57. Actually, no, we need Moa Pond power. That's the problem with getting up the glue gunner here. I have no idea. We do have Maelstrom traps if we need those, but they, those cost money. All right, we're going to take a risk here. You see how we haven't bought the invisibility potion yet? If we can try and last until round 37 by not going for an extra invisibility potion, it might be a risk here, but how are we going to pop Moabs here? Let's take a risk here. This, we're going to be here for a little bit. $1,800 left. We can't afford a Berserker Brew if we want to. So we go for Berserker Brew right here. And then we have just enough money. And I mean, we've just enough to where we can go for invisibility potion. But two questions. Can we last until round 37? And can one ring of fire defend Moabs? I don't think it can. Yeah, I don't think the strategy works. We're going to try and go for it still. All right, we need to survive one more round. We got some camos on this round. We might have some camo whites at the end of the round here. Let's see if we can tank these here. Eek, ring of fire is doing a fantastic job here, especially with the Alk buff. We do survive here. All right, so round 37. We're gonna go this. Beautiful. Neo Tide Capture Store. Oh no, $95. Oh, we're not gonna make it. Yeah, I don't think it's Geraldo then. So we probably have to use the Ace here. This is so difficult. Oh, it's $170. I did my math completely wrong. And I don't know if we noted this before, but we can't sell to save cash and stuff. It's all about spending cash. So selling our Alchemist to get up something else would not do anything. Even though you use less cash overall, technically. All right, let's just see if this can pop Moabs here. And it can't pop Moabs. So that's just not the solution in the first place. So we're actually gonna restart here. This is gonna be like a challenge here. We're gonna treat this like a less than 1% challenge here. And let's think about our hero here. Look at seven thousand dollars seven thousand eighty five dollars my goodness it's kind of annoying that our hero isn't chosen for us because then the possibilities are so much more let's say quincy quincy is extraordinarily cheap and he's good cam detection something else we could do is we could try and go for another relic tile to help out on this one we have run right here which reduces ability cooldowns by ten percent okay we have ten percent range right here oh the glue trap tile got no tell you what we're gonna divert from the previous challenge here and we're gonna go for this relic tile right here because this relic tile the glue trap one is so powerful we really need that so let's try and see if we can beat two minutes and six seconds here and look at this it's only one tier not two tiers so this is going to change things up a lot. So now it's all about speed. So I still think we want to farm here. Let's also try and top the balloons as soon as possible here. So let's go for attack right here. We're going for attack. And then we're also going for a sniper to clean up everything. So let's go for a sniper like, I like this spot right here. And then let's start with like a 101. Let's just do that for now. And then let's try and go for a farm as soon as possible here. Because even if we do lose a few seconds on the rounds, it's all about being Blunarius fast, not about the rounds. This is actually completely false. And you'll see what happens here. Now with Blunarius, because it's round 40, we're not going to have as much money here. But what's going to pop at the quickest here? And I'm going to say tax zone. If we can afford a tax zone, that could be absolutely incredible here. Can we afford a tax zone in time? Is that too ambitious here? I think that is, but we're going to take a risk and go for it. All right, we're doing okay here. We got a lot of time racked up already, which is not good here. So hopefully we just shred Blunarius. And I mean shred it. All right, we do not have a lot of money here. I don't think we'll afford tax zone here. Partially because there's a limit on farms here. We only get two farms for this challenge here. So normally we'd keep up farms until round 40 and then get up as much as we can. But honestly, let's go for Spike Storm's advance because Spike Storm's, they do have a cooldown here. We want to get that cooldown out of the way. But without Spike Storm, we should 100% save our farms until round 40 because round 40 is the checkpoint and then we can just restart and use our farms however we want every single time but let's just do this let's sell one go for you boom we don't need lead palm power that's fine okay we'll just start with that we'll start with that here hopefully that does good and then maybe like snipers because we do need to pop the balloons that are coming out all right here we go okay we used up all our money right here come on oh we're not gonna make that how did they do this hmm so we could go back to round 40 here, but we're going to restart this really quick. We're going to try and rely tax shooter more here this time. All right, this sack is killing it. We're doing so much better here. It's first, 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 first. A few minutes later. All right, so here we are in round 39, and we're doing really good. We've Oh, there we go. That was quick. Okay, let's delete you, 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 overdrive, overdrive, and then sniper. Oh, we have a lot of money here. Oh my gosh, what do we go for? I think we just lose right there. That's fine though, because round 40, we can just restart. So we're going to do this. We're going to pause it and we can do this better this time. So we know we have a lot more money than usual. Let's first see if we can go for tax zone. I don't think we can, but that'd be crazy, you know? Oh, tax zone 17,000. That's it? Oh, look at this thing get melted. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, get melted. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, we're going we're gonna to lose right there. That's fine. Retry. Okay, before, let's just sell everything before we start. Let's go for one blade mouse from the back. I think that'll just help out. And then we might as well try and pop it down as soon as possible. So let's try and go for another overdrive right here. Um, we can go for one triple dart here to help out a little bit. There's all the balloons right there. Maelstrom. So good. Overdrive. Let's go. Oh no, we know the Maelstrom. We do lose right there. Again. Five minutes later. We could also sell this one because it's not doing that much. And we're going to try and do this as late as possible here. Like that. Because now it's shredding that second wave. Zero, one, two, ice tower. Good. GG. Got it. No, we don't. We still lose. 
Oh wait, no, we won. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was sketch. Tile captured. Look at that score. That was really juicy. Granted, this person probably got a really good score and then it just degraded. All right, we got some changes in the map there. Beautiful. Your red team's kind of catching up to us here. This is kind of bad, but look at pink. Look at pink team. Oh, I feel so bad. The pink team does have the least amount of members though, to be fair. But now with our glue, it's time to try and take this tile right here. One of the most competitive tiles in the game. Now we have five routes now, so we have to decide which ones to use. I have no idea what Moab Plash does, but we're gonna use it. I don't think we need the white one. There's no ice tower here. So now, how do we beat this challenge in $7,085? I think we have to use Ace here. We have to use Ace and then just combine it with glue. And I don't think we even need Ring of Fire. I think that's, it's too expensive. So let's do Ace and then Ace with Alkabuff maybe. And then Quincy on top of that. So we'll go Quincy here. But look at this, we got our glue back. This is perfect. All right, so we did leak down a little bit there, but it's, we're saving cash by doing that, right? So we're gonna go for the Ace. I guess I could go for the Alchemist in advance because we probably will go for Alchemist. But let's go for the Ace right here. So let's plot down the Ace flag. Boom. And then we'll go for top path and middle path for that cam detection here. And then we'll see how much money we have left over. Oh, wait, yo. Oh my gosh. Big brain play incoming. All right, we're gonna get Operation Dart Storm right here. But think about round 28. All right, part of the reason we we're using Ring of Fire before is because we were shredding leads. But now we can't pop leads here. Quincy can pop leads, but it's a little inconsistent and it only comes at level seven and that will not be ready by round 28. So what are we gonna do here? Well, we have exploding pineapples here. Well, we have exploding pineapples here, but that's really inconsistent. It's gonna be really difficult to hit all the leads here. We could tank some leads, granted, but there's leads around. 30 so we're gonna have to find a way to pop lead somehow but the big brain play of the day we go middle path right here nearing capture score 980 oh my gosh this challenge is impossible i don't think we can go for anything else besides glue i don't know all right look quincy's not there yet come on pineapples actually we're popping them all right we're just gonna tank the lead for now because we want to save the glue but the big brain play right there was to use glue all right if you use glue pineapples surely could have hit the leads easy peasy ace actually did a fantastic job though like look at this it's already doing pretty good as i'm editing this i do realize that we could have just used an alchemist easy peasy but it's okay it all worked out yeah look at ace just offended all the leads without any micro that's crazy 980 dollars here it's got to be the glue gunner tell you what we're gonna do though we're gonna wait until round 40 before spending anything because then we have that checkpoint to go back on and the reason i was leaning towards the glue gunner over the alchemist is because i thought glue stall would help out way more than the alchemist buff because we could not afford much with the alchemist we had very little money at that point now 980 is really hard to use but it's not that hard to use if we go for another hero here so if this doesn't work let's go through all the heroes and see if there's any heroes that cost about 900 dollars more that we can use another thing to keep in mind is that if our opponent did the optimal solution and i mean and I mean the best solution possible, we cannot take this tile because ties do not take the tile here. So we have to hope that there is room for improvement. But the goal right now is to save all our money and all our glue here because we need it ready by the checkpoint here. We got a lot of leads right here, but we do have the exploding arrow at this point. Come on, micro time. Should be good. All right, checkpoint reach, round 40. We got that. We got all our glue, all our money here. Now it's time to experiment a little bit. Are we gonna lose right there? Oh, we already lose. Here's the problem here. Our defense is already very sketch and rounds ramp up really, really quickly and stuff. It's gonna be really, really difficult. So we're gonna go for a glue gunner here, but honestly, at this point, it's probably gonna be another hero. I don't think anything else is gonna work. But remember, we do have the glues here and we do have Quincy's abilities here. So we do have some leeway. A few moments later. No, that's not it. That's not it. This is way too difficult. Even with the glue, it's gonna be hard. All right, let's think here. What do we got? The problem with some of these heroes is I don't feel familiar with them. Like Pat and Etienne, zero idea what they do. Let's try and abuse Geraldo. I feel like that's the play here. Literally, all we're gonna do here is go for tax shooter and then just try and abuse Geraldo as much as possible here. We do need tax shooter for the round 28 lead. So we'll go for hot shots and then we'll go for hot shots and then bomb bottom path maybe all right there we go we're getting nothing else but geraldo now so we have five thousand dollars to spend which is actually not a lot five thousand dollars is not that much money here but let's go for shooty turrets here because we are going to be using our invisibility potion on geraldo here and so we need to make sure geraldo has a lot of defense so that when we use an invisibility potion on him he can defend camos really well here's the big problem here with the maze glue i bet geraldo can do really really well here the problem is we only want to use the maze glue when it's absolutely necessary and to figure that out we have to lose the challenge over and over again and so checkpoints will help especially the round 41 but if we really want to go crazy here we'll probably be losing after round 40 like a million times so we'll see how that goes all right so now we have three or three amazing glue so we should use one now just to have it but here's the problem it says last four rounds and are until used up which means that it doesn't last forever now that is a geraldo nerf right there they did do a small bt6 update the other day so i don't know if this is from it but this might be new but just like that we've already spent nearly a thousand dollars on shooty turrets you gotta be careful actually no wait we can tank so we, we need to wait until round 37 to use the invisibility potion if we really want to go crazy we could try and limit our shooty turrets to get as few as possible and we'll try and do that but we're not gonna spend a million hours trying to find the actual perfect like I guarantee you if you use if you spend hours on the challenge and micro and stuff you can find a really low cash score especially with Geraldo because Geraldo has so many options we also have the blade maelstrom here one free blade maelstrom for $500 that can be really clutch later we just 
have to figure out when to use it. Start a stroll here. Let's go for our shooty turrets here. We need Gary's fire. That's what we need the most here. Gary's fire is the next level, but we still got a little ways to go. All right, we're gonna tank all these camel balloons right here. And even though that's crazy and stuff, it saves us $170. You know, you never know. Especially with Geraldo here, because Geraldo could go down to the last dollar. Like normally $170 wouldn't matter and stuff, but Geraldo has stuff that's cheaper than $170 here. So I can't believe we're defending those pink balloons. Like that's so sketch right there. All right, round 37. We invisibly potion. Let's go for one more shooty turret, because why not? And then we'll invisibly potion here. And now we can't touch on all these. And so we really need Gary's fire now, though, because round 42 has camo rainbows, and those are really difficult to defend. But if we get Gary's fire on a camo turret, they will be able to hit camo balloons, and we should do pretty good there because it's like a dragon's breath. Yeek, that's a little sketch. We do defend right there somehow. We also have to remember we have two free glue right here, so we want to use those before the maze glue. Gary's fire, it's alive. Let's just use it. I think just having it will be really, really good. All right, so now we got the mob right here, and there's a checkpoint. We're going to take a risk right here, and we're just going to see how much, how well we defend a Moab without anything. Look at Gary's fire. That's so broken. That's so good right there. And we actually have two more Gary's Fire here. Let's see if we can last until round 47 without any more Gary's Fire. Because if we can do that here, then everything will be synced up to round 57. Okay, round 42 here. Come on, Gary's Fire. Gary's Fire is so good here. We could also try some pickle jars here. I don't really know what it would do, but okay, a lot of ceramics on this round. This looks like a good time to use a glue. And we probably want to use it in the front. Let's use, let's use a glue. Like, if this does not work, we'll go back to round 40. No problem. Okay, got three out of three Gary's Fire here. But instead of going for one right now, we're going to wait. And listen, we should be able to pop purple balloons. Easy peasy. Gerald is still OP. Like, I see they nerfed him a a little bit here but he's still super strong all right this round's very difficult here come on gary's fire oh we shred that we didn't even need the glue all right we got that and now we can go for as many gary's fire as we want let's go for two. Oh no every gary's fire we get right now lasts for the the rest of the challenge here because it lasts 10 rounds so literally we can just go for as many gary's fire as well there's no visibility potion oh shoot come on gary's fire clutch up Oh, we did lose like that. You got it. We cannot forget about the camo section. That's fine, though. That's fine. I like what we did right there. We wait till round 47 because then every single Gary's Fire lasts the rest of the challenge. All right, we're just gonna have the glue ready. And one of the advantages of the ace is the ace can hit balloons way back here. So when we were using the ace, we could have actually put the glue way back here and still gotten value out of it. But because all our defense is right here, we want to put the glue up in the front, even though it might be less efficient. Yeah, yeah let's use it. Let's use it. Late glue. Actually, this late glue is still gonna do stuff because it's gonna slow down balloons that are about to leak. And then if we're about to leak, we can just go for a mousetrap. And so it'll give us time to judge whether or not we actually have to use the mousetrap. Come on, Gary's Fire. Look at Gary's fire against ceramics. It's so good. Like once it latches on. All right, we got, we need camo section. Do not forget about the camo section. And then we go Gary's fire. Okay, you know, no, 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 no. Let's go for three, but let's not go for this last one here. Cause what if we don't need it? I don't know if that's too crazy. Cause we got multiple Moabs on these next few rounds. There's a lot of ceramics. Like normally rounds 40 to 60 are very chill, especially in, like chimps. You're literally just sitting there. But for this challenge here, especially when we're trying to go as low as possible, it could get a little sketch missing one Gary's fire. We only have two Gary's fires now. So let's just hold on to everything. Let's just hold on to everything nice and chill here. But worst case, instead of going for a mousetrap, let's go for Gary's fire because Gary's fire is cheaper than Maelstrom and it lasts the rest of the challenge. We're gonna leak down right there, but tell you what, we're gonna, let, let's restart really quick and let's use all Gary's fire, not hold back at all. And then we'll see how long we can last. We're trying to make this as optimal as possible here. So we spent the next half hour trying to greet as much as possible and get the cheapest defense to barely squeak by each round. It was just going all the way to round 50, losing, going back, going all the way around 51, losing, going back until we slowly learn the exact amount of defense you need to get by every single round. After 30 minutes, we finally hit round 57. All right, we're on the last round here we leaked down to five lives but we're still in this and we got a bunch of glue right there come on glue come on gary's fire good a little sketch we got four gary's fire though that's it come on please 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 uh we're just gonna maelstrom we're just gonna maelstrom it's been so long right there thousand dollars left over though that's really really good right there we took our time with it and now the score to be is 6085 right there beautiful yeah let's go we got flint tips let's go going for this glue trap was actually such a good call because it made because it made a huge difference in that challenge right there i think we could have just used a maze glue instead we did end up saving like 170 dollars which is nice but there we go contested territory and i have no idea when the update is dropping i don't think ninja kiwi knows either but this video took a long time to make it was super fun it was beyond fun it's, i haven't edited yet but but look at just, just just one more time at the map. Look how cool is it? Look at the design. Look at the, the glowing tiles right there with the effects right there. Everything's in. And then when you click a tile, it like bounces and stuff. And you can see it. Yeah, not to throw extra stuff in the video, but look at this relic tile right here. We got 10 stacks of road spikes per game. That's crazy. You get an extra 50 lives per challenge. All mob class moons spawn with 15% less health and move at 95% speed. That one's really broken. All right, wait, really quick. It's the very next day. I just finished editing and it took so many hours. Oh my gosh. I feel so good right now, but we're gonna do yours. We're just gonna see how the map has changed since yesterday, just to throw this in the video. So look at that. Look at all the neutral tiles. Look at this. We got a lot of purple tiles here still, which is great here. And we still have this challenge here, but look at this. It's $26,000 to beat now. This thing is going down so much here. But look how close we are to Banana Squad right here. We're catching up. Man, the video has to end at some point, but legit, after I finished recording yesterday, I sat there for a little bit just admiring the map. I cannot get enough of this map. Oh my gosh. All right, thanks for watching. Brush your teeth. Wait, we forgot to show water tiles. So here's the water tiles right here. We got water, water, 
water water you got the point this video took a crazy long time to make so if you made it to this point thank you so much i hope you enjoyed please consider dropping a like if you did it really helps me out and brush your teeth